When's the last time you changed the transmission fluid in your Vanagon? Well, if the answer is never, today in your end luck, we're going to do a step-by-step -step guide on how to change the transmission fluid in your manual transmission Vanagon. Changing the fluid is actually pretty simple. It only takes a few basic hand tools, a gallon of your favorite uh, transmission fluid, and just a, maybe an hour of your time. So let's go over the tools and the parts you need to get this done. Transmission fluid, 17 millimeter Allen. A way to transfer the oil from the uh, container into your transmission, ratchets. Okay, a word about this Allen key. I've seen on different forums and different posts, people kind of cheapen out, get themselves a 17 millimeter bolt or a coupling nut and make something do. Yeah, sure it works. Um, but why not just go get the right tool? You can go to Harbor Freight, pick this up for a couple of bucks. AutoZone, I think I got a, a, a three set of 14, 17, and 19 for less than maybe 10 or 15 bucks. It is way easier to use. I'll show you a little trick here pretty soon um, why this tool is actually a two-in-one. Okay, we're under the van. We're on the passenger side. So here's your, uh, here's your shift linkage and your coolant pipes and your drain is right right here it's right there i'm sorry your fill is right there i said drain <laughs> let me see a better shot of it it's that blue guy right there so it's you know, obviously the linkage is in the way um, it's not a super easy thing to get to um, but with your 17 millimeter hex key and an extension uh, you can get that right out one thing you want to do before draining transmission fluid is have the tranny warm does two things for you one, it makes the fluid a lot easier to drain. The warm fluid will come out a lot faster. And two, all the junk that settles in the bottom of that transmission overnight doesn't always come all the way out because the drain plug can't get everything. So if you drive the van, warm up the fluid, all that stuff kind of gets back in suspension of the oil. And as you drain the oil out, it all comes with it. So let's take Westy out for a quick spin, get the tranny all warmed up. Okay, we're back under here. The engine's still pretty warm, so I gotta be careful on the exhaust pipes. But we're going to check the um, fill plug, clean it up, um, and get on this. We're going to take just a little bit of oops, simple green here. And the rag. And give this thing a clean so you don't get any dirt or anything that falls into this it's kind of a shame to go through all this effort and change a fluid and get a bunch of junk in there when you take the plug out. You can see that any better up in there. But... Okay. Let's see that looks pretty clean. We're gonna take our 17 millimeter hex key on a short a four or five inch, uh, half inch drive extension. And we're going to fit it up in there above this pipe in there, nice and snug. So we have this right here on the end. We've got our ratchet here. And we're going to Slowly turn that so we can see it's turning. So we know it's gonna come out good, which you'd hope so. I just had this rebuilt two years ago, right? Okay, so it's loose. We're gonna leave it in so we don't get any junk in there. We're back at the drain plug now. You see with your hex key is not going to fit. Um, at least with the Rocky Mountain Westy exhaust, and I am almost positive with the factory exhaust as well. Um, so this is the part a lot of people have problems with. Let's go find out a way to make this fit in there. Okay, what you're going to do is take your 17 millimeter hex key, you put it in your vise, you take a punch and a hammer, and you give it a few taps. Uh oh, oh there it is. And now, 
you have just a slug of a 17 millimeter hex key. And now we have a little hex key that fits right in. We can use our 17 millimeter box in right there to get the fluid out. Okay, here we go. Another rag. There. We're gonna give this a few turns. So that stays nice and tight in there. out so it's out of the way Put your drain plug you're gonna get it all over your exhaust that's just the way it's gonna be okay there we go a little mess not bad I've done better trying to get every last bit of that oil out so we're gonna let it sit here for quite a while, uh, maybe an hour or so. And then we'll, uh, once the oil's completely stopped draining, we'll tighten it back up and get on with filling it back up. Now I've never used a pump like this to do the transmission fluid before. In the past I've used the funnel and the clear tube on the side of the van method, and it works okay. I thought I'd give this a shot. Um, the funnel clear tube thing is just slow and can be messy if the tube pops out of the transmission while you're trying to fill it up. Um, and so I'm gonna try this Penzoil pump. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I might regret this, but it seems like a better way to go. Oil's done draining. Clean this up a little bit. Wipe off any excess oil. I always wanna keep everything as clean as possible. I like to make sure this stuff is super clean and I'm done. That way, if I have any oil leaks or something I didn't notice before, and catch it before it comes a problem. Just keep your stuff clean. It's a lot easier to deal with. Okay, this back in. Some people put sealant on these or, or pipe dope or whatever, or Teflon tape. I have not done that before. Haven't had a problem. Oh, well, I don't have a problem this time. Uh, let's see. You don't need to go crazy on tightening these things. Remember, there's a good chance you'll be the one having to take it out next time. Okay, let's go up there and uh, take that fill plug out and try this new pump out. Let's take that fill plug out. We're just going to keep this on here like we had before. Let's see. Show you pop this back in. We'll just take our box and wrench so we have it like this. I'll loosen it. Take it out. Whoop. We're doing this one handed. Filming this kind of stuff adds a whole another layer of complexity. plug quick tip I guess if you want you can actually get a second drain plug and it's the same threads as the fill plug and you can have a magnet up there too if you want to catch more stuff okay so I marked this so this goes in so we'll pump this into the sweep co and this let's see we can spin this around out into the transmissions. We'll feed this up over here into the fill hole. And uh, here we go. Oh. 
That is some thick oil. This is 7590. That's about as much as this pump will do, I think. Okay, well we're getting at this uh I'd say about a quarter left in there. Pretty soon we should start washing to see if we get any drippage out of the hole. Once that is full, I don't know if you see it, but um, a little, once it starts weeping out, that's when you know you have enough in there. No reason to overfill. As you can see, just started dripping out, which is nice because the suction hose was having a hard time getting to the bottom of this. So we're gonna go ahead and put that fill plug back in. finger tight and then we'll get our 17 and snug it up like the drain this one does not have to be I mean the drain should be snug not to fall out but definitely the fill plug does not need to be over tightened there's no fluid against it it's a pipe thread so it's gonna get tighter as you go so there's no need to really crank this down Go. Out of there. Now we just got to clean up our mess and up here again. You don't want oil drips anywhere, indicating you may have a problem later on. So let's get this cleaned up, and then we'll take her for a drive and see how she shifts. Well, there you go. It's really not that hard. Uh, we got this done in maybe an hour or so, and maybe half that was waiting for the oil to drain. So it's something you should do for your transmission. At the very least, you can pull it out. You can pull the drain plug out, look at what your magnet looks like. And that's a telltale sign of how long your transmission's got left. If you hear it grinding, or you got some whiny noises in third or fourth gear, uh, maybe your one-two shift is, isn't as good as it used to be, that magnet may tell a tale. Um, you say we use the Sweepco 202. It's expensive. It's gonna last us for the next 30 or 40,000 miles on there, which for us is probably three to five years of adventure. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And again, we'll see you next time.